video. It's 817 here at KFI, 17 past the hour of 8 o'clock with TNT. We check your traffic every 10 minutes. Here's Mike Nolan, KFI in the sky. Hey, good morning, Tracy. Terry Ray, minimal flying really here on the westbound from Motor Freeway. The delays are not bad, bad at all, all the way from Azusa across toward the East LA Interchange. So you'll slip below the speed limit here and there, but overall, I think you'll enjoy this Monday morning ride on the westbound 60. Still busy, though, stop down on the Hollywood. It'll be a struggle from Hollywood Boulevard down toward Alvarado. Earlier we had this morning, we had an overturned cement truck in the whole on ramp to the northbound 71. We're going to have a look at that and see if it's still a problem. Accident on the Orange Freeway, southbound 57, approaching Ball Road. The carpool lane and fast lane have been partially affected. And it's still going to be busy off and on West 91 Freeway across toward the 55. Also on the West 91 Artesia Freeway at Main Street, right before the Harbor Freeway. A report of an accident this morning, Westbound 91 before the Harbor Freeway. Have the gas company out for an energy fitness test or call them for a do-it-yourself kit. They're glad to be of service. Mike Nolan, KFI in the sky. Thank you, Mike. Now at 8.18, the latest from the KFI News Center. Here's Terry Ray. And this just into the KFI News Center. An attorney for actress Mia Farrow says she has won custody of the three children she shared with Woody Allen. The attorney says Justice Elliot Wilk has also barred Allen from visiting one of the children for at least six months. He was accused of abusing the girl, Dylan, who is now seven. In addition... Allen has granted supervised visitation only with his biological son, five-year-old Satchel, and the judge has ruled he may not visit his 15-year-old adopted son, Moses, at all, unless the boy asks to see Allen. KFI News Time is 819. This year's AIDS conference is underway in Berlin. Karen Sloan reports AIDS researchers don't expect to reveal anything new. The chairman of this year's AIDS conference doesn't expect any spectacular scientific breakthroughs to be announced here. Carl Otto Habermel says some of the more promising discussions will talk about gene therapy, fiddling with the coding of the body's cells to prevent infected ones from reproducing the AIDS virus. But practically that technique is a ways in the future, and in the meantime there are other things to work about. Since we have no real breakthrough in therapy, uh, prevention is one of the most important things. Doctors at an AMA meeting over the weekend also stress prevention, reiterating that condom use and sex education are two of the most effective tools in the U.S. Karen Sloan, Berlin. About 2,500 people raised nearly $300,000 for Sacramento AIDS programs in an annual one-kilometer AIDS walk in that city. More than twice as many people walked yesterday than they did last year in spite of threatening weather all day. Interior Secretary Bruce Babbitt appears to be the guy at the top of the list for the U.S. Supreme Court. Clinton administration official calls the former Arizona governor the president's top pick. Key senators are meeting with the president this afternoon to try to work out strategy to pass his economic package. House Majority Leader George Mitchell predicted on NBC today that a modified version of the package will pass with all the Democratic votes on the powerful finance committee. United Nations officials describe a grisly scene of death and dismemberment at a refugee camp in Liberia. They say survivors blame soldiers led by rebel Charles Taylor. But Taylor tells BBC the killings were staged by other forces who want an excuse to go after him. UN officials say their efforts to reach a besieged Muslim enclave in eastern Bosnia are stalled because the Bosnian Serbs military commander still won't meet with them. Bosnian radio says the enclave of Gorazda is being shelled by the Serbs for the 12th day in a row. KFI News Time is 821, 21 minutes after 8 o'clock. TNT, Tracy and Terry Ray on a Monday more news in minutes. I'm Terry Ray Elmer. And I'm Tracy Miller. Back to our dates from hell. Here is Mary in San Diego. Hi, Mary. You're on KFI. Hi. Hi. I met a man through the personals. Oh, no kidding. No, no we're kidding. talking about personal ads. Yeah, it? I know. And um, he described himself as having blonde hair mm -hmm. and uh, brown eyes mm -hmm. and five foot ten and I met him at a restaurant downtown when I walked in this man with a very uneven gait who was five foot six and had very little blonde hair. Did he bring the gait with him? <laughs> <Here's Christ. laughs> he should have and stood on it with one leg. <laughs> anyway, you to tell me one little... limb was shorter than the other. Yes, one, yeah, unfortunately. Oh. And I thought, well, okay, you know, I mean, the man couldn't well, help you, that. You wanted to be bigger than that, didn't you? But you just couldn't hang with it, could you? Be honest well, with it. what happened was he, he said, well, let's go in and have dinner. And I thought, well, okay, you know. And we had a nice conversation, but um, I asked him, you know, what are you ordering? Because I didn't want to order anything too much more, you know, if because I didn't know what his financial status was. Mm -hmm. And um, he said, well, I'm having this early bird special. And I looked at it, and I thought, well, that sounds really good. <laughs> so I'll the have the two. Bird. And he said, well, I had big lunch. Are you very hungry? And I said, well, no, not really. Uh, because what do you say, you know? Right. He says, shall we split it? 
Oh, oh no. Man. Cheap so, with a limp. So, yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> so um, I said, okay. And so we you know, came, and the restaurant presented it very nicely. And so he says to me, before the bill came, he says, um, how do you usually pay for these dates? In other words, do you pay, and some women pay half and insist on Oh, no. no. Yeah. So I said, I don't. <laughs> oh, good for you. Good answer. Good answer. <laughs> so when the bill came, he pulled out a VIP card, which meant he got this early bird special that he shared with me for half price. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> and he took half of his half home to his mother. Oh, oh my God. It was is unbelievable. Oh, Did he squeak when he walked? <laughs> no, he, he lived. Very oh, and he lived with part. his mother, too. This is yeah, another segment yeah. we did this morning. Yeah, but, you know, I did get even somewhat because I did have a glass of wine that was real expensive. Oh, good for you, the yeah. Chateau uh, Rothschild. No, it was a Merlot, but... <laughs> <laughs> well, that was my oh. day from hell. And then he said, should we do it again? Oh, Kathy. <laughs> <laughs> I said, really, there's no chemistry here. <laughs> no money, either. It's just not a love connection. <laughs> no, no. All right, thank you, Kathy. Oh, that's funny. That's a good Oh, that's awful. Well, yeah, it is awful, but, you know, you could be the person who went out with Don from Fontana here on KFI. Hi, Don. Hello, Tracy. Hi. Uh, first time. Well, anyway, but, uh, you know, I think to give us guys the wrong handle, you know, our states from hell, because sometimes there's extenuating circumstances. Oh, I see. There's oh. a reason for being a date from hell. What What was your reason for being a date from hell, Don? Well, when I was young, I got dressed, uh, I had a blind date, and I met her at a pizzeria. Mm -hmm. I was in my 20s, and I had a Cadillac, and, uh, you know, this was pretty rural area then. And I'm driving down the road, and the light comes on, says it's too hot, you know. And so it was uh, the radiator. Yeah. So I thought I could urinate a gallon. So I got out and opened up the hood. What did he do? I couldn't get any water anywhere. So I took off the radiator cap, and I was standing on the bumper. No, you did not. Yeah. I you mean to tell me? I get the... This gal in the car, and oh I had on a suit. I'm talking dressed in the middle. Don, stop right there. You didn't, did you get it, T-Ray, what he did, what no, Don did? I, I, yeah. yeah. Yeah, Don, that's a date from hell, and there's no excuse for it. <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't care how young you were. 825 here at KFI. <laughs> Extenuating service. <laughs> that's so gross. Now, the question is, would you rather have him do that or be stuck with him out in the middle of nowhere? <laughs> Good point, you know what, honey. Jerry, that is an excellent question. I'd say neither. <laughs> at 8.25 here at KFI, 25 minutes past the hour. Whoa. <laughs> Jerry Wallace with a look at the three-day forecast. Nice day for a drive. We have uh, 62 degrees here in Los Angeles and looks like it's going to be about 75 for the average high today. That's about right for this time of year. Our outlook for the rest of this week calls for a warming trend. Hey, how about 90 degrees possibly out in the valleys by Thursday. Temperatures each day is about 4 to 5 degrees warmer than the day before. That's the KFI exclusive three-day forecast. I'm Jerry Wallace. Oh, boy, it's 826 here at KMI, and it's time for sports, and here's Rich Morata. The Angels, in a bit of a tailspin now, have dropped five of their last six games. The Detroit Tigers pounded the Angels yesterday by a count of 11-4. to four. Cecil Fielder, a couple of home runs, seven RBIs in that one. The Angels now tied for second with Chicago, and they're a game and a half back of Jerry's beloved Kansas City Royals, who extended their lead yesterday with an 8-7 to seven victory over Milwaukee. Atlanta Braves beat the Dodgers yesterday 2 to nothing, ending the Dodgers' 13-game home winning streak. John Smoltz, the complete game shutout for the Braves. The Dodgers right now standing third in the National League West, six games back of San Francisco, which beat Pittsburgh 7-1. to Two giant events in the world of sports coming up tonight. Stanley Cup Finals Game 4, Kings in Montreal, 6-10 is face-off time at the Forum. Look for the Kings to be a lot more physical in this one from the very opening face-off. And George Foreman and Tommy Morrison will get physical tonight at the Thomas and Mack Center in the Las Vegas. The 44-year-old Foreman, hinting that this is his final fight, brings a 72 win and only three loss record into the ring. But he is a slight underdog tonight to the young Tommy Morrison. I'm Rich Murata, KFI Sports. It's 827 here at KFI. Terry Raywitz coming up in the news. Coming up in the news, Senators talk about taxes in Washington this morning. And your Limbaugh update right after these words on AM 640 KFI. Prepare.